Investing to support digital entrepreneurs from our oldest living cultures empowers global impact. Australia has over 12,000 Indigenous businesses generating more than $2 billion annually. An Indigenous-owned business is 100 times more likely to hire Indigenous employees, benefiting the local economy where the businesses are founded. First Nations people have been at the forefront of invention and creativity as the first peoples of this land. However, despite their sustainable practices and innovation, communities face increasing challenges in the digital economy. We need more Indigenous businesses to focus on those future economies to be sustainable and we need to be inclusive around access to those opportunities where we can build our businesses up to recruit more of our people and our future generations who are going to be our future leaders. So the Indigenous business sector is growing tenfold and we've seen that since 2016 when the Indigenous procurement policy was first implemented to where it is today and we see about, about 15 to 17,000 Indigenous businesses. Um, but one of the big challenges, as, as I've mentioned, is around that access to capital. How do we close the gap? How do we empower First Nations entrepreneurs, um, increase capital, what needs to be done on the individual level, the community level and the state level and industry? collaboration, um, capability building and, and capital obviously they're, they're gaps um, and, and gaps we need to talk about and gaps we need to um, you know fill somehow uh, and, and we need to sort of all work together on how, how we address those. Hearing you know stories from uh, exceptional entrepreneurs on what they're doing so that they then look up to them and say we could be doing something similar. There and it's also about celebrating success stories so the next generation can actually really look up and learn. I like that saying of um, you can't be what you can't see and it's so true. Um, I remember when I was younger and it was, I d it didn't see a lot of Indigenous women doing business, if at all, really. Um, and me being in construction, that's a whole nother ball game. So I'm very proud of um, that award of accelerating women um, with the, uh, just being a finalist. So thank you for mentioning that. Being sitting next to these people, it's very empowering to see it can be done, like Jasmine's saying, um, you can't be what you can't see. The First Nations X Pathway Project can help unlock the full potential of Indigenous entrepreneurship to secure Australia's future prosperity. First Nations X supports sustainable economic growth, creates jobs and strengthens bilateral relations. It's an uplifting journey with national impact. Of particular note are commitments to clean energy and environmental solutions, Australian METs, Agritech and Agrifood, all areas where First Nations business have strong competitive potential. We do not charge Aboriginal businesses uh, any fees or any other type of costs. We established it really to pull together a startup ecosystem. So there's some fantastic things happening all over the country, but they're still quite fragmented. And so that's really the goal is to help connect, provide capability, um, capacity, and also to showcase. There's a growing sophistication of what we are capable of with understanding how do we fit as Indigenous businesses into the future. So specifically from the mining area, we see a lot of that demand for value chain transparency. So how do we respond to that as Indigenous people? Definitely um, more conversations on a global level around value chain. What we're seeing now is the expansion of First Nations businesses. We're not being pigeonholed. Blackline Industries is also operated by the Indigenous Shared Services Group um, and they're a group that co-invest, pool and share resources to ensure that Aboriginal individuals can continue to create uh, a self-determining economic future. My, my grandmother and I think with a lot of um, the people on here would agree and the Indigenous community that the, the women in our families are the matriarchs. You follow the women line, so they're very important to us. And uh, when I lost my nana that time, um, a lot of wisdom, that you, you lose a lot of wisdom whenever you lose an elder. So uh, she was a huge impact on where I am today. The sessions that we were doing are, uh, literally taught us to use our ask muscle because as women, um, we don't usually ask stuff. We do stuff for other people and um, as Indigenous women, we, we are always nurturing our communities and our... So going into a workspace, you're always looking out for everyone else and I think structurally that's how my business had been set up. For those Indigenous businesses that are involved in engineering or construction or in the mining sector can have an opportunity to play a role in space research. To try and address the digital divide that exists, it's around getting our people 
uh, participating in, in the digital economy and that requires our people to understand that uh, there's a place for them, they're able to participate and it's about building on relationships and collaborating with others and connecting with corporate and government Australia as well as the wider community. It's that richness of connectivity around relationships that will take us further into the digital economy to be a greater participant and that's only can be exciting. We've seen technological advances in the last few years that have just been astronomical in terms of, of their reach. It is important though that every Western Australian, regardless of whether you live in the city or remote community, gets to benefit from this new economy that we're in. And I think the digital economy will also um, provide similar opportunities for, for people in remote communities to be able to use digital connectivity to create businesses, to partner with people, to sell their art, to showcase their country and their culture, just provides an amazing opportunity. Everything's possible. Look out there, see what the conditions are like, see what things might be building, what might be breaking, but you have to kind of see what's coming and get yourself there. People can now build mass audiences from anywhere. First Nations X leverages a number of collaborators. The promise of technology was that it was supposed to be this great equalizer. By pulling together different First Nations people in ways like First Nations X, where you're having these different countries uh, get together, I think this is the right approach. One of the things that I like the most about that program is, again, you're not talking about, we're going to come in and help you. What you're talking about is, what do you need to get you the right resources that are necessary? If you get the right opportunity when that wave is coming, then you can see real successes. And whenever we can get Indigenous people, people from regional areas to participate, it just increases the richness so much more. Indigenous businesses are 100% more likely to employ Indigenous people and also more likely to reinvest back into community. And so if you think about that as, a, as an impact thesis, then you know that this, by scaling Indigenous businesses, we're also creating employment opportunities, we're also creating greater investment or self-sustaining investment back into communities. What I'd love to see if I'd imagine one for the future around the First Nations ecosystem around business, trade and investment, uh, is a healthy community that's uh, financially secure and healthy in mind, body and soul. We're looking for businesses that have high Indigenous impact. I think now's the time that we can um, make the most of this convergence and really make change for the next generation coming through.